Hi, my name is John Garfield. It is August 11, 2013. And this morning I want to talk to you about letting your heart breathe. I think it's an important concept. So when we think about choosing life, <coughs> the, the fact of releasing kings is really fun right now. There are two aspects. One, the wind is at our back prophetically. And two, there's a huge amount of resistance from the enemy in our face. So, wind at our back, resistance at our face. That's the reality of what's going on. <laughs> All over the world, there's a mighty army waking up to a breath of fresh air that is bringing life and vitality and fun. So, I'm going to paint this uh, as the way it is prophetically and the way it is some first fruits are experiencing. It's a precious season to watch this resurrection and to help prophesy it into existence. And lots of people are hearing the same message, also experiencing the same kind of warfare. Listen to Ezekiel 37, starting in verse 9. <clears throat> then he said to me, this is Ezekiel's dry bones prophecy, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood upon their feet. And I want to suggest to you that we're in that hour. There are many uh, that uh, are dead in their spirituality <clears throat> um, and God is uh, causing them to come to life. He's causing us to help breathe on them and breathe life into them. So this newsletter is all about how to make that practical. So when we go from the old to the new, let me give you an illustration. I listened to a mother this week whose son was trying to identify a career path. He was thinking in terms of pursuing his heart's desire and it wasn't easy because he's been raised <clears throat> in the Christian culture of, belief, of being saved and staying away from sin. Those are the two goals. <laughs> that translates to going to church, tithing, serving, don't smoke or drink, and marry your girlfriend. <laughs> so what slipped out of my mouth surprised me a little bit. I just said to her, if you do all these things, so what? Nobody cares. <laughs> but if you pursue your heart's desire, and it's also in the Father's heart, to, and it builds the kingdom, and you enjoy it, and it bears fruit, and it causes prosperity, and you have fun, other people really notice that, and they gravitate toward it. That is the gospel. Young men in particular need to be motivated by their dream, and they cannot be corralled into a religious system, even if the rules are biblical and simple. Okay, That's a fact, but is it good or bad? I, I just think of it as a spiritual reality. God created us for relationship, not for rules. A healthy relationship will satisfy the rules, but you can't go from keeping the rules to improving your relationship. That's the paradox of Christianity. Rules are an attractive alternative to the mind, but not the heart. The letter loves the mind and kills the heart. But the breath of life, your dream, enlivens the heart. I'm confident in one thing. The more I focus on the rules with my mind, the more I break them. <laughs> okay, and that's true for all of us. 2 Corinthians 3, verse starting in verse 4. Such confidence as this is ours through Christ before God, not that we were, are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant. Not the letter of the, but the, of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. So somehow we've got to make that verse practical in order to come to life, in order to make that Ezekiel prophetic admonition come to pass. So, what's the new? Start out with what's the old? The old is trying to discipline ourselves to do what we would rather not. Okay, The new is connecting with our heart in a way that releases us to do what we really want to do. God designed us that way and He wrote the specifics on our heart already. Our hearts have to connect with those desires in order to come alive. That is the breath of life that this army is beginning to experience. That is the front of the warfare going on right now. Hebrews 8 verse 10. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Uh, we're going to be his sons and daughters <coughs> and we're going to have his laws written in our hearts. We're going to have a, a dream written in our hearts that we uh, run to, uh, literally, cooperating with our heart. This is simple, the simple reality of biblical and spiritual life, and it's actually foreign to most of us, most believers. We're in the midst of a reformation that is connecting 
kings and sons with the Father's heart. We guard our hearts because that's where we find the overlap with the Father's heart. And that is the one thing the enemy would like to steal from us or cause us to be discouraged about. So if your dream hasn't come true yet, don't be discouraged. Keep contending. That's the only choice we have. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we read our Bibles, we hear from the Holy Spirit, we receive wisdom from our leaders, that's our tradition. We're not abandoning any of it. Now we're looking in our hearts to see what God wrote there and connecting with that dream. It's a wellspring of life. And we connect, if we connect, good things very naturally flow out of our hearts. If we are unaware of the desires that God wrote in our hearts or work against them, Evil naturally comes from our heart, as evidenced by our own words. Our hearts gravitate toward false sources of life, drugs, alcohol, sex, you name it, um, if we don't connect with the true breath of life. So if, if you get connected with the real dream, that's more exciting than any of the counterfeits. That's the key to overcoming sin. Okay? Proverbs 4.23, Above all else, guard your heart, for it's the wellspring of life. Hear that phrase the wellspring of life. That is the key to resurrecting Ezekiel's army. That is the key to causing the church to embrace her destiny. That is our personal key to fulfilling our own destiny. Luke 6.45, the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. The evil man brings evil out of the things, out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart his mouth speaks. So, What's righteousness? The easiest way to live the hundredfold life is simply get connected with what God wrote in your heart. You're precious in His sight, and all the talents, gifts, and motivations are pre wired for your success in your own metron or calling. When you find it, you'll be good at it. You'll enjoy it. You'll bless others in the process. And I want to make three suggestions to make it happen from a practical standpoint. One, love the way God made you. In fact, love yourself, okay? You're fearfully and wonderfully made for a specific future that God is inviting you to choose. The very foundation is to know that and to have respect for your own contribution in the kingdom. The kingdom is not just an eternal worship service. Uh, fellowship with the Father is not a cosmic tea party. Our Father is creative, He's building, He's growing, He's working, and so are we. Growing closer to the Father comes from working with Him, from doing things together. That's where the real fellowship is. Love people. The second thing is, uh, and this is a personal testimony, when it finally dawned on me that other people are not primarily desperately wicked sinners, I could see God's handiwork in them. Even if they are in the snare of sin, saved or unsaved, I can still tempt them with something much sweeter right from within their own heart. Jesus and their own dream, their own destiny. Everybody loves to talk about that topic. And if you can put a little t prophetic twist in it and put your finger on what, they're, what is close to their calling, they will rally to it. <laughs> People love to talk about their purpose in life. God has wired us all with a hunger to be sons. All creation groans waiting for them to be revealed. John 13, 34. The bottom line of this personal revelation for me, it, it helped me love people. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the wellspring of loving people. <laughs> John 13, 34, A new command I give you, love one another. I have loved you, so, so must you love one another. By this all men will know that you're my disciples, if you have love for one another. The third step, write it down. <clears throat> the most practical foundation that you can lay is to wrestle through the definition of your own future and get it in writing. Get your life purpose and goals in writing and take the time here on earth seriously. Put the kingdom first and everything else will take its proper place. We've developed a heart plan and a coaching system to help you get connected. You can help self-help your way through that or you can get help from us uh, to do that. I just want to suggest to you that <clears throat> this resurrection that's happening, happening right now, learning to let your heart breathe by embracing your destiny, embracing the desires of your heart, that's your wellspring of life. Amen. God bless. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.